Hi, I'm Alex Satmarie. I'm a mechanical engineer at Hexagon, helping students and professors put our software to work. In this video, I'm going to show you how to model a column that is undergoing buckling. This is very similar to how we model beams, at least if you're using the custom tools that I've put together. So for that reason, I would suggest that you go watch the beam video, which goes through all of the steps. The main things that are added by this video are how to interpret buckling results using post-processing and how to set up a buckling simulation. All right, well, let's get into it. To use the column tool, we click on Education and then click Column. You can click the green check mark, and that will make a default model to start with. And that model is ready to run. Next, we'll enter post processing by clicking Make Post. In a buckling analysis, we are most concerned about the loads that cause buckling to occur and the shape that the part assumes after being buckled. So, this mode could be caused by this scale factor here. Because we entered a force of 1 newton, um, this actually would correspond to a force in newtons. 2.63 E5 would cause this column to buckle. If instead I had entered a desired load, maybe I want the column to be able to carry 10,000 newtons, then um, the number that I would see here would be uh, more a factor of safety and it would have a different magnitude, of course. So that would be 2.63 E1 would happen if I, that would be what I would calculate if I were to apply a different load. It's really up to you whether you want to think in terms of getting the tool to calculate a factor of safety for you or um, the actual critical buckling load. I prefer to just think in terms of the load. We don't have any apparent buckling in this picture, but actually if we rotate, we can see that the column has bent toward us. So sometimes you have to rotate to see where the buckling occurs. This column has a square cross section, so a lot of our modes are kind of paired. So this first mode and this second mode have the same scale factor, and you see how mode 2 has the same shape as mode 1, just in a 90 degree angle difference from it. We can also look at modes 3 and 4, which again have the same scale factors, and uh, they have the same shapes as each other, just rotated by 90 degrees. And modes 5 and 6 um, have the same scale factors and same shape. Just same shape rotated 90 degrees about the y-axis. We can look at all of the scale factors by opening up the data grid, and you could export these values using the export button. Um, depending on how the buckling modes are arranged, it could be more convenient to pull them off by clicking on each of these bars individually uh, or extracting all the values in one go from this table. Either of those could be more useful. Let's leave post-processing and I'll show you how to modify the model. To modify the model, we just go back to the column tool. We could change the material property from steel to aluminum. We could double the length of the beam. We could change the force to, you know, 10,000 if we wanted to. Um, we can change the support types. These labels, fixed, pin, and free, are the same as what you would have for a beam. Um, they're just adjusted a little bit differently to work right for the columns. So if we wanted a pinned pin column, we could do that. I'll click check to apply these changes to the model. When we re-entered this view from post, uh, the cross sections are no longer being shown. We can enable that with the 2D or 3D beam span buttons there. We can modify the cross section of the column using the beams tool, and we can just click edit. Um, and I go over how to do that in the beam video in more detail. Again, that's linked in the description. I want to show you how this model is built, so I'll inspect things with the Model tab. So here's the column, that's the part, and it's based on this curved geometry that is a 1D thing, um, a mesh which breaks that down into line segments, and then each of those line segments has the beam span, which is the cross section, applied to it. So each of those sections acts like a beam or a column. Um, we can also look at the constraints. So the bottom constraint is unable to move in X, Y, or Z, um, but it's free to rotate about the X and Z axes, and that's what would happen if you were to buckle this. I do prohibit rotation about the Y axis. Um, if we didn't have a constraint like that, the column would be theoretically free to spin around in a 360 degree angle. 
And that wouldn't really happen in real life, but um, we need to be able to assure the finite element model that that's not something that it needs to consider. So we disable this. It makes no engineering difference whether that rotation would or would not be permitted, but it's essential for the model to run right. The top constraint, although it's called pin just like bottom, it's a little bit different because I had to disable translation in Y so that the top of the column would be allowed to come down. You can inspect the loads. And because we're dealing with 1D elements, just a point load that's applied directly works perfectly fine. There's not a lot about how this model is built that's different from how you would model a beam. What is really different is how we set up the simulation study. So if we click on the studies tab in here, we see that the scenario is set up as a buckling scenario as opposed to a static analysis. Um, so the way that we could create this from scratch if you didn't have the column tool. So you could right click on study, click create scenario, and instead of having the type be static, you would just change it to buckling. For more advanced um, buckling modeling, you could include a static preload. So that's how you model a column in buckling using MSC Apex. I want you to check out the description for more information, like the link to the Beam video that I mentioned, or how to download our software for free or contact information, and you'll want to get in touch with us so that you can get the education custom tools if you don't have them already, for related solid mechanics curriculum, or for any help that you would want teaching with engineering simulation. All right, have a great day. Bye.